Välkommen till Kungliga vetenskapsakademin och den här presskonferensen och vi ska presentera årets Nobelpris i kemi. Welcome to the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and this press conference where we will present this year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry. We will keep to our tradition and start the presentation in Swedish and then continue in English. And you are of course welcome to ask questions later on in either language. Jag heter Hans Ellegren och är ständig sekreterare här på Kungliga Vetenskapsakademin. På min ena sida sitter professor Heiner Linke, ordförande i Nobelkommittén för kemi. Och på andra sidan professor Olof Ramström, ledamot av Nobelkommittén för kemi och sakkunnig inom ämnet. My name is Hans Ellegren, I'm secretary general of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. And to my right is Professor Heiner Linke, Chair of the Nobel Committee for Chemistry. And to my left, Professor Olof Ramström, member of the Nobel Committee for Chemistry and one of the experts in this field. Årets pris handlar om att skapa nya rum för kemin. This year's prize is about creating new rooms for chemistry. Kungliga vetenskapsakademin har idag beslutat att utdela 2025 års Nobelpris i kemi till Susumu Kitagawa, Kyoto University, Japan, Richard Robson, University of Melbourne, Australien, och Omar Yagi, University of California, Berkeley, USA, för utveckling av metallorganiska ramverk. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has today decided to award the 2025 Nobel Prize in Chemistry to Susume Kitagawa, Kyoto University, Japan, Richard Robson, University of Melbourne, Australia, and Omar Yagi, University of California, Berkeley, USA, for the development of metal organic frameworks. Professor Heine Linke will now give us a short summary in English. Please. <clears throat> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we have a great prize for you today. <clears throat> Imagine that the tools of chemistry could be used to create entirely new materials with unheard of properties. For example, <clears throat> imagine we could make solid materials full of tiny spaces in which gas molecules can feel at home and with chemical properties that can be adjusted to the specific needs and wishes of different molecules. One could then imagine to create materials that can separate carbon dioxide from air or from industry exhaust pipes. Um, or that could be used to separate toxic molecules from wastewater. One could imagine making materials that can harvest water molecules from dry air and make potable water in a desert. Or materials that have catalytic properties on their inside so that toxic gases could be absorbed and then transformed into unharmful substances. This year's laureates have achieved, achieved just that. They have found ways to create materials, entirely novel materials, with large cavities on their inside, which are, can be seen almost like rooms in a hotel, so that guest molecules can enter and also exit again from the same material. Um, a small amount of such material can be almost like Hermione's handbag in Harry Potter. It can store huge amounts of gas in a tiny volume. This type of materials, called metal organic frameworks, can be created with almost unlimited, in almost unlimited variations, creating um, unending possibilities for the greatest benefit to humankind. Thank you. Thank you, Heiner. Uh, Professor Olof Ramström will now give us a more in-depth presentation of this year's Chemistry Prize. Please. My privilege. 
so well, this year's award is a story full of holes, but with enormous capacity to absorb all your attention and other things. So this year's award is about frameworks, as we heard. And here you can see a typical construction framework. It happens to be made from wood, where the wooden boards or planks are joined together, assembled, probably using metal nails or screws. And, uh, of course, this makes up the skeleton of this construction or this future house, but you can actually hint, see hinted here the many rooms inside this framework. So imagine now how we would be able to make such a framework at the molecular scale, and it, instead of using metal nails or wooden boards, we would use ionic or atomic molecular nodes and linkers and let them assemble themselves in such a framework. And this is exactly what our laureates have been working with. They have adopted a type of chemistry where you use metal ions or metal clusters as nodes and link them together with organic compounds. Organic compounds are such that are made from um, used, uh, com containing carbon, carbon-based molecules. So we have the metal ions as nodes, and then we have the organic molecules as linkers. And once you have identified those and mixing them together, they will then find themselves and arrange themselves in a type of self-assembly process into an ordered framework, a metal organic framework, as you can see here. Now, this may look quite straightforward when you, when you see it like this. However, to build such ordered structures was a very, very uh, difficult challenge for many, many years. And although we actually knew about structures that looked like this, uh, how to actually predictably being able to make them was very elusive. But let's go back to the late 1980s. At that time, Richard Robson, he reasoned that it would indeed be possible to build such frameworks predictably by taking metal ions and molecular uh, organic, uh, organic linkers. He was inspired by the structure of diamonds, as you can see here. And if you know, uh, diamonds are based on carbon atoms. And each carbon atom in diamonds are, are uh, surrounded by four other carbon atoms in a pyramidal or tetrahedral orientation or shape. And as you can see here in red. So Richard Romson reasoned that if you take a metal ion, in this, in this case copper one, as you can see here in purple, acting as nodes, and mix that together with an organic molecule, which is also pyramidal shape or tetrahedral shape. You can see it here in yellowish white. And in this case, each arm of this molecule, this organic molecule, uh, has a so-called nitrile group. And the copper ion and the nitrile groups, they can find each other and form bonds. And that will, in principle, lead to a structure that would be um, similar to, to the structure of diamonds. Well, contrary to the uh, general expectation at that time, in the late 80s, this actually worked really, really well. And Richard Robson uh, obtained such an ordered framework structure, as you can see here. Now, in contrast to diamond, to the structure of diamonds, where the carbon atoms are very, very tightly packed. This framework, however, contained cavities or holes, uh, as you can see, it's relatively large cavities or holes. And when you make this material, this, these cavities will be filled by, we call them inclusions, compounds, in this case, solvent molecules, and also uh, negatively charged ions, what we call counter ions. Once having showed this, uh, this work, this demonstrated that this is indeed possible, Richard Robson also reasoned, he came up with several principles and, and discussed different features of such material. He, for example, discussed 
uh, how to modulate such materials to make them more strong, how to, to keep together more strongly, to make the cavities smaller or bigger. He also predicted some applications of such materials, such porous materials. He also be, was able to show one such application. He was actually able to replace those negatively charged ions I mentioned with other ions in a common process in chemistry called ion exchange. And he could do this without the material collapsing in the process. Now, this is all about porous materials. And one of the absolute the most important uh, applications of porous material is gas adsorption. And so we're jumping ahead a, a few years. And uh, Susumu Kitagawa, he managed to demonstrate that gas adsorption is indeed possible in these materials. So he designed and produced a relatively complex framework, as you can see on this picture. And this framework, too, contained uh, cavities or channels, you can see them here in yellow, uh, that when you make this, uh, when you made this uh, network framework, they were actually filled with, with water. However, this time, this framework was stable enough, so when you remove the water from the cavities, from the channels, the material was still intact, it did not disrupt in the drying process. So now you had a material with em that was empty, and that could be used to adsorb, to take up gas molecules in a gas adsorption process. And Susumu Kitagawa could show this for several gas molecules, such as methane, oxygen, and nitrogen. He could show that the, the gases could be taken up, adsorbed by the material, and could also be uh, released from the material, desorbed from the material uh, reversibly. So by now, if you look at this structure, we now had frameworks. The, uh, the development had come so far, so we now had frameworks that were stable enough to endure to emptying the pores, to emptying the, the channels and cavities. However, because, the, the, because of the principle of making these structures using metal ions, clusters, and organic linkers, Susumu Kitagawa reasoned that there is another feature with these materials. He then uh, predicted that not only can you make such stable materials that can take up gases, you can also have this material changing shape uh, upon changing the conditions. Um, and you can see that. So in that case, you will get, you will get this kind of shape-shifting, flexible metal organic frameworks. And you can see an example here where you have one shape where you have gases inside the cavities of the material, and then when you remove the gases, you have a different shape of the material. Now, at around the same time, a, a very important breakthrough was made by Omar Yagi. So Omar Yagi had been working for several years to try to make highly stable metal organic frameworks. He was looking for methods to make them more stable. And uh, he reasoned that if you use one of those metal clusters, as you can, as you can see here on the left-hand side, this is a metal uh, ion cluster based on zinc ions and oxygen atoms. And if you take that cluster and you mix that with organic linkers that contain carboxylate groups, then you would reach, then you would get a very stable construction. And he could show that in this um, structure, this metal organic framework, was, which was denoted MOF5. And as you can see, this framework is um, a cubic framework. You have lots of cubes stacked upon one another. And you can also see that this is a very porous framework. And you can see the, the cavities or the, uh, in, inside the framework symbolized by this uh, yellow spheres. Now, this is an astonishing framework because it was highly stable. It, could, uh, it, could, uh, it was stable all the way up to 300 degrees Celsius, heating up to 300 degrees Celsius. But even more remarkable with this material, with this material was that it contains an enormous surface area. So just a few grams of these porous materials roughly the same 
amount as a small sugar cube, a couple of grams, contained as, as much surface area as a large football pitch. That is several thousands of square meters, right? So in a sense, that's exactly what Heiner mentioned before. This is a little bit like Hermione's handbag, small on the outside, but very, very large on the inside. And what this also showed is that this material are very, very suitable to adsorb large amounts of gases and other molecules. And this became an eye-opener for the entire field. So not only did uh, people coming in the field from, from outside of the field, but also industry became very, very interested in, this, in, this, uh, in these materials. A few years later, Omar Yagi uh, made a, a conceptual contribution, important conceptual contribution. So because metal organic frameworks 